Welcome to our virtual strawberry field day in May 2020 at the Central Crops Research Station in Clayton, North Carolina. The research station in Clayton, North Carolina is known for its research on strawberries for several decades. This year we have breeding and selection trials, variety trials and weed control trials in Clayton. We also have a steam trial uh, as a pre-plant fumigant alternative and we have insect control trials in Clayton, North Carolina as well. Uh, we highlight today the STEAM trials in the breeding section and we're going to start with STEAM plus allyl ethyl theocyanate or AITC. AITC is the active ingredient in mustard or wasabi. It's called allyl ethyl theocyanate and is also available as biofumigant uh, with the trade name Dominus. Our hypothesis was that STEAM will activate AITC and will lead to higher wheat and pathogen control and also to higher yields. We've put in five treatments, non-treated control, Piclor 60, AITC, AITC and STEAM, and STEAM alone. STEAM was applied with a STEAM generator, which we got as a loan from the USDA in Fort Pierce, Florida. We replicated our treatments four times. Now we'll show you how we put in our STEAM treatments in September 2019. So now we are actually steaming our first field here. And um, it's running now for 10 minutes already. And we don't have any leaks. Everything is running fine. The machine is running very smooth. And I'm very excited about this. Do you want to come with me? This is, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> All right, so now we're steaming for about one hour and uh, it's time to shut the thing down. To test our research hypothesis whether or not steam can control weeds and pathogens and increase yield, we injected steam with spike hoses into the ready-made beds in our uh, research trial in Clayton. But before we look at the research results, here's some pictures from our first harvest in mid-April. This is the AITC treatment. This is AITC and steam. They both harvested very well. Um, Piclor 60 started a little bit low, but now is picking up as well. And then this is steam, very similar to Piclor 60 in terms of yield. And then this is uh, the non-treated control, the non-fumigated control. Regarding our results, it's very clear that AITC, AITC and steam and Piclor 60 could all uh, control pathogens. We looked at Pythium Ultimum as a, as a standard control. At the end of April, AITC alone and AITC plus steam had the highest yields, followed by Piclor 60 and steam alone. We want to thank Aaron Roscoff from the USDA in Fort Pierce uh, for the permanent loan of the steam generator and Stephen Fenimore and UC Davis and Salinas for uh, the spike hoses and also our research technician Emma Folk and Owen Washam who performed the pathogen assays in our laboratory. And now to our second part of the virtual field day which is uh, breeding and cultivar trials. Hi everybody. This is Gina Fernandez. I am the strawberry breeder at NC State University. I am here at the Central Crops Research Station in Clayton, North Carolina. And I just wanted to show you the three components of the breeding program that we have here at the station. We have a replicated variety slash selection trial where we test um, material from our breeding program and other breeding programs in a replicated trial. And that is right there. We also have a number of selections that we have in single plant plots and they are this first row here and the back section of this field right here and then lastly we have about three or five thousand seedlings in this section over here so those are the three components that we have at the, the station here you'll hear more about them throughout this virtual field day thanks and 
Hope to see you some soon. Bye. This section right in here, these five rows are, are a variety trial where we test a lot of material from other locations, uh, other breeding programs, mostly name stuff. Uh, and we would have uh, Chandler Camarosa in here and a bunch of other ones. We have, I think, 12 entries this year in this location. We are only able to harvest um, a subsample of 25 fruit from these. At this location, we are harvesting the full plots at the Piedmont Research Station. We're here at Central Crops Research Station, May 8th. This is Chandler. The variety trial here was planted the 8th of October. Chandler looks a little overcropped. We did have a mild or warm fall and mild winter. Rocco, early season, smaller in size, nice appearance, good yield. This is Liz, good yield, nice fruit shape. Here is Ruby June, moderate sized plant. Nice size fruit will continue to yield. Kalinda, the European variety, good size plant, nice size fruit. Here's a quick look at some of the materials that we're trialing in the uh, cultivar trial. Some of the standard cultivars you'll see right here and then some of the NC selections, um, mostly stuff from 2019 uh, that we're trawling so far. Hello, I am Jose Yermuchocón. I am a postdoctoral fellow working with Gina Fernandez in strawberry breeding. Um, here uh, in the background you see some of those selections that we are evaluating for yield, taste, uh, disease resistance. And part of my work is to evaluate in the field but also apply some molecular and phytopathological tools but to get more information out of the selections if they are resistant, if they are susceptible to several diseases and maybe the more important ones right now are the anthracnose pathogens, the fruit rot and the crown rot and I hope that becomes a reality in the future, in the near future using well this field work combined with uh, laboratory techniques and a lot of hard work. Thank you very much. We planted 5,000 seedlings from the crosses we made last year. There's approximately 18 different crosses or families out here. Each family has the same parent but each individual seedling is unique. We use a flagging system along with some stakes with notes on there to help us identify the plants that we find that we like. Some of the parents had agronomic characteristics that we found superior, such as yield, shape, flavor, plant architecture, we crossed those with varieties that had superior disease resistant traits. And the job now is to find the complete package for the next strawberry variety. So here is a selection from last year in a 20 plant plot. And we've continued to like it. We will carry it on till next year. And 
Then we will put it over here in what would be our replicated trial. To summarize, the NC State straw repeating program has three stages. About 5,000 seedlings are evaluated at the central crops and the horticulture crops research stations. 29 selections are evaluated at the central crops research stations and a replicated cultivar trial is performed at central crops and Piedmont research stations every year. To evaluate the 5,000 seedlings, each plant is looked at in a time frame of one to two weeks and plants with good traits are flagged with colored flags on wooden stakes as shown in the video earlier. Now let's see how plants from the cultivar trial and the selection trial are being evaluated this year. During COVID-19, fruit evaluations were done in Dr. Fernandez's house. In the field, horticulture traits such as plant vigor, appearance, cap size and firmness are evaluated and also disease resistance. In the laboratory, we take yields, 25 berry weights, uh, sugar levels, and we look at color, seed location, internal color and shape. We also freeze five berries for later assessment of pH, TA and anthocyanins. And our lab dog has her very own evaluation criteria. At the end of this video, we want to show you some of the advanced selections, which we are looking at at the moment in our trials. Thank you very much for watching our 2020 virtual strawberry field day. I hope we can see you again in 2021 in person. And we also have wheat and insect control trials at the Central Crops Research Station this year, which we hope to discuss with you in our upcoming field day webinar, which will be on May 28th uh, from 2.30 to 3.30. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. And until then, I hope you stay happy, kind and healthy. Does anybody